Hello, this is part three of a set of recordings showing you how to use ANSYS Workbench to model a very simple cantilever. And in this um, recording, we're going to use a solid element model. Um, just to remind everyone, this is the model, and we've already modeled this twice before using beam elements and with shell elements. Um, I'm going to switch to ANSYS Workbench, and I'm going to make my third static structural model. And I'll call this a solid model. And like before, I'll share my engineering data across. And like before, I'll open up Design Modeler. And I'll wait a moment for that to open. And just like before, I'm actually going to use very similar uh, modeling technique to the, um, the, the shell model where I'm going to extrude. But this time, I'm going to need to actually draw the inner and outer surface of the model. There's a few ways to do this. I'm just going to do it in kind of a traditional way, I suppose, where again, oh, before I do anything, I'm going to change my units to millimeters. And I think I can change that into defaults, but I haven't. OK, so I'm going to draw one circle and I'm going to draw another circle inside. And hopefully I've got the same center, which we've just got to be a bit careful to get the center. There's a there's a few ways of clicking that there. I come in here and now I pick the radius. And if I remember right, the radius one is I would make that 21.2. And then I will get the second one and I'll make that 18.2. And that's made my radius. OK, and that means that I can come back to the modeling and the sketch and I can extrude and apply because I've selected the sketch before I go. I can just pull that sketch into here. And again, I'm going to extrude by a thousand. This time I'm not going to select it as a thin surface. I'm just going to go to my ISO to see what's going to happen because then I'm going to press generate. And hopefully what I see now, I need to zoom out, is I've got a solid model. So this is actually three-dimensional solid model of the tube. Once I've done that, that's it. I've done. So I can come out of um, the design modeler and open up my structural solver um, pre-processing and post-processing program so we open up the modeler and here we have it and um, we can see that everything's ticked until we get to the mesh and now we've got a little bit of a problem with the student version of ANSYS if I just generate a mesh on this using the automatic settings I get quite a lot of elements and I could continue modeling this absolutely fine if I'm on campus in the university um, and I have the full version of ANSYS with a full license I'll be able to solve this however if you're at home with the student version um, that's downloaded on your own machine you may exceed the number of elements in this model that the license allows you so I'm actually going to course in the mesh I'm going to insert some sizing and I'm going to make sure I select the body like this for the selection. So I use the body command here, select the entire body. And the default size, I'm actually going to change my units to millimeters, which will help me as well. And I'm going to make it, I think 50 millimeters should actually be quite good. And if I generate the mesh, what I will see is a lot less elements on here. So this is something you might want to play with. Um, you could probably make a more refined mesh and still keep within the limits of the license. I'm just going to keep this really simple. OK, so now I need to add a fixed support to the left hand end. So actually, it's useful for me to use the rotate tool in these toolbar and I can rotate around to here. And that gives me a option just to then insert a fixed support and again up here I've got various options I'm going to make sure I'm selected on the face control F which means I can actually select this end face if I get it right Ooh. if I can actually get it there we go apply that and there's my fixed support I might go back to my default view and go back to my default view here and then I can actually again insert my force and again I'm going to select it on the face and again I'm going to select it as a component in the y-axis minus 100 here we go and just like everything else before I'm going to put my directional deformation in here um, oh I've already done it in fact so I don't need that and I can look at my directional deformation select it into the y-axis just like before and then finally 
I can solve. While it's solving, let's shift it into the right discordiate systems, and now I can see my directional deformation, and I get a deformation of 2.3 millimeters, which matches quite well to my Euler Bernoulli solution already. Um, so that concludes the three ways that we could model this cantilever beam, or the three ways that I wanted to show you how to model this cantilever beam. Um, I've only verified this model in terms of the deflection. However, I'd really like you to also look at the verification in terms of the stress. And you might find that you don't quite get such easy verification that these models are necessarily perfect at modeling this stress. Um, so just to finish, I will very quickly show you how to insert a stress result into the solid model. And I can insert stress in all sorts of different ways. So if I come down to the insert stress, I have the von Mises, which I'm going to use just to start with, but I have obviously all the different components of stress, principles, shear stresses. Um, and so for this, I'm going to put the stranding stress in and evaluate the results. And what I see here is kind of what I want to see, which I see that a nice blue band, which is showing me the neutral axis with very little stress. And obviously I have zero stress or very little stress down at the right hand end. And now if I rotate around at the top here, what I see is that I get a maximum stress at the cantilever support and it's at the top and at the bottom of the beam. And it's about 30 megapascals. And if I went back to here, it's not far away from the normal bending stress predicted by Euler-Bernoulli theory. However, it is very interesting to look at the distribution of that stress, particularly if you start to refine the mesh. And that's where I want to leave you to go off and actually explore some of these concepts yourself. Okay, that concludes the um, um, the three recordings. Thank you very much.